In the previous part of the lesson, you saw how to enable an error handler in a simple procedure using the onerror statement. In a more complex procedure, you may wish to enable an error handler for only a small part of the procedure. This part of the lesson explains how you can disable an error handler after it's served its purpose. Let's start by opening the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and as usual, choose to enable content if requested. The workbook allows you to select a year from the drop down list on the menu worksheet and then click on either the get hit list or get flop list buttons to get a list of films from the year selected. The subroutines attached to each button on the menu sheet will generate a runtime error when you attempt to run them. Let's try clicking the get hit list button. We'll see a runtime error dialog box appears and if we click the debug button we can see which line is causing the error. The line that gets highlighted here is attempting to delete a worksheet called hit results. The reason it fails is because that worksheet doesn't yet exist. Let's stop the procedure by clicking the reset button. The easiest way to avoid this particular problem is to add an on error statement which will ignore the error. If this worksheet doesn't exist, it doesn't need to be deleted in the first place. Let's add an on error resume next statement above the line that caused the error. On error resume next. We can now return to Excel and check that the code is working. So let's have a year selected from the drop down list and click the get hit list button. This time, rather than seeing an error message, we get the list of films we were interested in. We should check that the code still works and does delete the hit result sheet when it does exist. So let's return to the menu sheet and select a different year and then click the get hit list button again. This time the list of films is different, so that means that the previous worksheet has been deleted successfully. The error handling code seems to be working correctly to solve the first problem we encountered. However, there is another potential issue. When you add an on error statement to a procedure, it affects every subsequent instruction in that procedure. We've added an on error resume next statement to ignore any runtime errors, and that remains in effect until we reach the end sub statement, so any problems that occur in any other part of the procedure will be ignored. To demonstrate why this might be a problem, let's return to Excel and change the name of our menu worksheet. Let's double click on the menu worksheet name and change it to something different, let's say something like main menu. Now let's select a different year from the drop down list. I'll return to the original one I had selected, 2013, and then click the get hit list button. It wouldn't matter which year you'd selected. In this example, you'll always end up with an empty table. And the reason for this is because the code that we're working with relies on there being a worksheet called menu to pick up the year that we've selected. You can see this line here refers to a worksheet called menu. When we have an on error resume next statement and we reach this line of code referring to a worksheet called menu will cause a runtime error. But we've told the code to ignore any runtime errors and just continue as though nothing had gone wrong. So that means essentially that the year chosen variable never gets populated because it can't find a cell on that sheet. To solve this problem, we should disable our custom error handler once it's handled the error that occurs by deleting a worksheet that potentially doesn't exist. To do this, we can add another on error statement immediately after the line that has caused the original error. We can say on error, and this time go to zero, which disables any custom error handlers that we've added. So after this point in the procedure, the VB editor will do what it would normally do if any runtime error occurs. We can now test the result of this by switching back into Excel, going to the main menu sheet, choosing a different year or keeping the original one and then clicking the get hit list button. This time we'll see a runtime error occurs and if we click the debug button, it highlights the line that's referring to the non-existent sheet. So of course the code falls over, but at least we have an idea about why the code isn't working in the first place. There are several possible solutions to this, but a fairly quick and simple one would be to first of all reset the procedure and then change the code name of our main menu sheet, one that isn't affected by the end user changing the name in Excel. So very quickly, we could select sheet one, main menu, and then in the properties window, we could change the name of the sheet so that it's called something like WS menu. 
Once we've done that, we can find the item or the area in our code where we reference the worksheet by name and then replace that with a reference to our code name, WS menu. So now if we return to the Excel workbook, we can go back to the main menu sheet, choose a year and then click the get hit list button and now everything will work as expected.